Hello and welcome to our online recording for this, the 10th Sunday after Trinity. I preached at 8 and 10 today and the sermon I preached at 8 is the one that I recorded and will show you in a moment. Gospel reading at both services was from John chapter 6, uh, beginning at the 24th verse, <coughs> which I'm going to read you now. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum, looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform, to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives light to the world. Then they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. How important to you is Holy Communion? What part does the Eucharist, the Mass, the Lord's Supper play in your beliefs, in your faith, in your worship, uh, in your relationship with God? How important is it um, to you? Um, obviously, we know it's historically been important to the Church and particularly to the Catholic and Orthodox part of the church, and by Catholic I mean Catholic with a small c, so Anglican Catholic as well. Uh, there are certainly many Anglican churches for which Holy Communion is, is absolutely central uh, to, to everything they do. In a way. Um, clearly it's important to us. Uh, we, we have 8 o'clock communion services every week. Our 10 o'clocks are communion services at least three or four Sundays a month, so it, it forms an important part of our worship. So, Clearly, it's, it's important. Uh, I think the reason, the recent furore uh, about part of the opening ceremony of the Olympics um, shows that it's actually important to, to the whole church. Uh, even the, the more Protestant and uh, uh, less Catholic wings of the church uh, were in uproar about what they perceived to be a, 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 a blasphemous depiction of the Lord's Supper during the opening ceremony. Um, it was actually, uh, they perceived uh, a, a reproduction of Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper, uh, but clearly the Last Supper was the foundation and the starting point of the Lord's Supper. Uh, it was the first time Jesus broke bread and said, do this in remembrance of me, and we use those words during our communion service each and every time that we do. I don't know if you've been uh, following the Ferrari at all, uh, but uh, it was instant. Uh, as soon as people saw it, they thought, oh my goodness, this is, this is, a, this is a terrible representation of, of a very holy element uh, of the Christian faith. Um, the response now is that actually it wasn't meant to be that, and that it was actually a depiction of a painting of Dionysus, uh, and uh, a painting from the 17th century has been produced uh, of a, uh, a feast of the Olympian gods, of Dionysus, of Zeus, uh, of other Olympian gods, 
uh, and the explanation is supposed to be that um, actually this is the Olympics, so by depicting Olympian gods, uh, it, it wasn't meant to do anything to do with Leonardo's uh, painting at all. There is a slight problem that I have with that, which is that um, the first response from the Olympic Committee before the artists started explaining uh, was simply to say, well, throughout history there have been many, many uh, images and reproductions uh, of the Lord Supper. So Leonardo da Vinci's painting is so well known that it's been used in all kinds of ways, and this is just simply um, another way. But that explanation, in a way, undermines the later explanation, because if Leonardo da Vinci's painting is so well known uh, to everybody, then surely the people putting this together would have realised that, that it would instantly have been interpreted in that way, uh, at least by Christians and probably by many other people. In addition, um, the art historians who said, oh, well, you don't know your art properly, this painting here from the 17th century of Dionysus is clearly what it's meant to be based on, actually then go on to admit that because that painting was painted 150 years after Leonardo's painting, that actually the artist himself based it on Leonardo's painting. So no wonder that that very first scene that appeared in that opening ceremony, before the camera was moved, was a tableau that nearly everybody would have seen as the Last Supper, even if it then pulled out and other elements came in. Um, I do take Holy Communion seriously. I do take the Last Supper seriously. I also think as Christians, uh, <coughs> we need to be seen to be generous and forgiving. Uh, and whilst I think it's appropriate to point out that this was a mistake, uh, I think the vitriol and the anger uh, that has come through is very much in contradiction to our own Christian values. Uh, in our Ephesians reading, we, it talks about acting with love uh, and compassion to not just each other as Christians, but to, to all people. Uh, and certainly some of the, the, the nasty criticism and the unpleasant threats that have been directed to the artists, to me, completely contradict what we're trying to say and why we're defending the last song. Suffice to say, though, that clearly Holy Communion is incredibly important, and the Last Supper, as the, the feast at which Jesus introduced Holy Communion, is incredibly important too. The pagan aspect, I think, is slightly interesting because actually, in our reading today, Jesus, I think, is, is saying something along a similar lines. What he's saying to the crowd as they follow him well, across the land and I'm tracking down. Remember, uh, two weeks ago we had at the tent service the reading of the feeding of the 5,000? Well, that's the start of chapter 6 of John's Gospel. <coughs> so, when they follow him around the lake and he says to him, you're only here for the bread, effectively is what he's saying, um, he's referring back to the feeding of the 5,000, which starts chapter 6 of John's Gospel. But what he's effectively saying there is, look, people who follow other gods follow them because they want help in their daily lives. Paganism and pagan God worship is all about, you know, I'll, I'll follow you, I'll have a little shrine to you, I'll, I'll make offerings and sacrifices to you, in return, bless my flocks, look after my family, etc, etc. It's that kind of relationship. Uh, and what Jesus is saying, look, you're, you're, you're following me, but you're following me for the bread and for the practical things I can do for you. That's not what I'm about. I'm about something much, much more than that. Christianity is very different from paganism in the sense that it's a relationship with Jesus and it's about what Jesus does for us as people uh, and also what Jesus does for us after death. I offer you life after death, eternal bread that will not perish. So it's, it's, it's a very different type of faith to, to, to paganism. And Jesus is saying to the crowd, look, you, you, your motivation is wrong. It's great that you're following me, but your motivation is wrong. And so, in a way, that's the question I'm asking us to ask ourselves as well. What is our motivation? Why are, we, why are you here at 8 o'clock on a Sunday morning when most of the people around us are not? What is our motivation for following Jesus? Why are we seeking Jesus? Uh, I, I think I know the answer for the people who are in this room. But it's a question that we should ask ourselves. Are we, are we really doing this because, 
because of our relationship with Jesus and our desire to be closer to Jesus and our desire to have the Holy Spirit in our lives? Or are we doing this because we hope uh, that somehow we'll be protected, that somehow our lives will be blessed? I don't think that is the case, but certainly it's important that we remind ourselves that from that to time to time. And also to remember what Holy Communion is about. Why are we coming to receive Holy Communion? It's perfectly possible to live a Christian life and to read our Bibles and to pray and all the rest of it and not take communion. And yet, clearly, it's, it's so important to the Church. The Catholic Church uh, has seven sacraments which it recognises uh, officially as being the seven most important. A sacrament, you'll remember, is any, anything material, anything that happens, any, anything or object uh, which we believe is, is physical and part of this world, but at the same time is mystical and is part of the Kingdom of God as well. Uh, and so, so they recognise seven of those in particular which are important. The Anglican Church actually only officially recognises two which are ultimately important, not, not that the other five that they recognise, or indeed many others aren't. God worked in all kinds of ways, in all kinds of things. Uh, but the Anglican Church said, well, actually, there are only two things which Jesus specifically told us as a church that we must do. One of them is the great commandment in the Matthew's Gospel, where he says that we should go out and we should baptise people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So baptism is one of the two sacraments of the Anglican Church. And the other thing that Jesus told us to do, and I've mentioned it already, is at the Last Supper, he tells us that we should do this to remember him. We should break, break bread together. We should gather together and break bread to remember him. Um, and very early on in the Church's tradition, Christians would gather together and break bread together, initially in each other's homes and eventually uh, in, in churches. Interestingly, John's Gospel doesn't actually mention the institution of Holy Communion in his story of the Last Supper. If you read the Last Supper in John's Gospel, actually there isn't any explanation of the Last Supper, but that's not because John doesn't take it seriously importantly. I think it's for a couple of reasons. Firstly, remember John's Gospel was written quite a bit after the other three, Matthew, Mark and Luke. Uh, and so by then, there, those three versions of the Last Supper, with their inclusion of Jesus breaking the bread and instituting the Last Supper, uh, they would have been very well known in Christian circles. The foot washing of the Last Supper had therefore got slightly sidelined. And I think John therefore thought, well, I, I don't need to put the, the Holy Communion institution in because it's, it's there and it's already being done and practiced. This is end of the first century when Christians were already sharing Holy Communion. But I think I think John was thinking, well, I think the foot washing at Last Supper is very important too. It's, it's an important message in that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put that in and make more of it than the other gospels and leave the communion out. But I think the way it shows that his gospel shows that he does take Holy Communion very seriously is chapter six, the chapter that we're in at the moment. Uh, where, in fact, the whole of the rest of the chapter is Jesus talking about him being the bread of life and what it means for Jesus to be bread. And in fact, uh, over the next three weeks, you're going to get the rest of that chapter. Uh, and so week by week, we're going to go deeper and deeper into what Jesus means by being the bread of life, and also think about what that means to us sharing Holy Communion. Clearly, Jesus in John chapter 6, talking giving this long discourse about how he needs to be treated as, as the living bread, uh, must be linked in our minds to Jesus taking bread and saying, this is my body given for you, do this in remembrance of me. So we'll, we'll think about how that reflects uh, and what that means. Today, as we, as we start that little journey, uh, I'll bring you back to the question I asked at the moment, at the beginning. Um, what does this mean to you? How important is this uh, in your faith and in your practice? Uh, and as we come up to the bread uh, in a short period's time, uh, and you receive the bread and the wine, then, then think about what, what is this? Do, 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 I, do I think, as the Roman Catholics do, that this is, this is literally become the body of Christ, that Christ is literally here with us? 
do I believe, as most of the church, that the Spirit of God is at work in some mystical way that we don't really understand in this. This is a sacrament. This is the presence of the Spirit of God in, 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 phys in something physical that we can touch and feel and hold. Or maybe, and you can still think it's important, but maybe you think, well, actually, what we're doing here is we're, we're just remembering. We're, we're just doing something to help us remember. And it's the remembering that's really important. Whatever you think or believe, I think it's worth reminding ourselves of that from time to time. And perhaps thinking about the other views and whether maybe there's something in those that can teach us something as well. Why ever we come, whatever our motivations, uh, we need to remember that this is, this is important. This is something that Christians for 2,000 years have taken very seriously. Uh, and also remember that this is something that Jesus himself told us to do. And so at the very least, as we gather here in a moment and share and break bread in communion with one another, we are reminding ourselves that we are the body of Christ and that Christ is present with us here and now as we break bread.